The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of KLAY or those who advertise their products or services on this station. Good morning. Welcome to Locking It In with Devin Pear. And we're talking today with Nick Baker from Roy Home Services, and we're going to talk about the exciting topic of carpeting. This is uh, Perrin Walker, uh, NMLS number 173529, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, NMLS number 2289, is an equal housing lender. This is not an offer to enter into an agreement. Not all customers will qualify. Information rates and programs are subject to change without notice. All products are subject to credit and prop property approval, NMLS number 173529. You're about to embark on another exciting adventure on Locking It In with Deb and Pear. I'm Deb, the real estate Sherpa with Coldwell Banker Bain in Puyallup. This program is a resource for information on all things relating to real estate. We'll be talking with industry leaders about a variety of topics. It's important to keep in mind that every situation is unique, so please always seek the advice of a properly licensed professional before applying any information we share with you. And in no case should anything we say be interpreted as legal advice. Okay, so um, as we mentioned, we are in the studio today with uh, Nick Baker, and we're going to be talking about carpet cleaning. Um, and in, in, if you wish to follow the show or make comments while while we're here or or after the show, you can um, contact us on our Facebook page at Locking It In. And if you want to download this episode later, go to LockingItIn.com, and you can see the complete archives. So, Perrin, you were telling me, let's see, we, we've had some requests since our last few episodes, and um, we wanted to share with you the process of um, just, if you want to buy your first home, just, just how do we get started? So, Perrin, maybe you can help us out with that. I would love to. The first thing it takes is a start. You need to start somewhere. First, you should see a loan officer and speak with him or her about your situation. Maybe have him or her pull credit on you to see where your credit score and credit history is. Of course, you need to have a source of income, whether it be a job that you've had for two years or retirement income or a pension or Social Security disability or something of that nature. Okay, great. Um, so income, what, I, what if I work you know, $15 an hour at Burger King, um, can, I, can I buy a house? If you've been on the job for two years or in the industry for two years, in customer service for two years, or in retail for two years, something of that sort, so two then years. yes, the, two years is the magic number. Okay. Um, so, well, what, what if, uh, if, if I had the same job two years, but I don't know, maybe my income changed a lot. Hopefully it's going up. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and what about um, bills, debts? Like, if, if you know, I think people go and they, they, they want to talk to you, but I think some of them think, oh, before I talk to Perrin, I'm going to, you know, pay off my credit cards what what would you say well it's it's good to have a good debt ratio um but typically uh, with with a lot of like for example on the on the down payment assistance loans you can have a debt ratio up to 50 percent of your monthly income which your your housing payment you would want to be about 28 percent 32 percent or something like that but the rest of that that ratio in there can be credit cards, student loans, auto payments, that kind of thing. Um, so the the best thing to do is to talk to a loan officer. Uh, you can help them to decide which bills to pay off first? Well, the, yes and no. Yes, I mean, it's up to the individual what, what they want to do. But uh, we can we can give it we can give advice. Um, and uh, we can let them know what their situation is and, and what, what their situation needs to be 
in order to, to get a loan. Okay, okay. So what about savings? I mean, you know, I, I've heard, you know, um, many people are uh, is still assuming that, that you need this huge chunk of money um, to purchase a house. Well, it's that's not necessarily true today. Um, you do need to have a couple thousand probably um, access to a couple thousand dollars, either from a gift from a family member or in personal savings uh, because there are certain things that you need to come up with deposits for that you may be able to be reimbursed for at the closing table possibly uh, if you go with the down payment assistance program but uh, you, you will have to make some deposits okay um, such as such as uh, earnest money deposit um, which which could be five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars, or even one percent of the sale price. Okay, um, is, is that it? What about? Uh, I think in most times, the buyer usually wants an inspection too. Yes, that's not required by most lenders. It is required by the down payment assistance comp uh, organizations, uh, but they they don't look at it to be. To be honest, they look at the they they want a copy of the receipt of the inspection, so and it's it's for your own benefit. You need to know what you're getting into, um, and it, that'll cost like three hundred fifty, four hundred fifty dollars, something in that range. Okay, yeah, and I think it depends on what type of inspection that you get. There's different. Uh, there's a regular home inspection. We have uh, electrical, plumbing, all that. Uh, pest inspections are really common as well. Okay, and and the appraisal. The appraisal, yes. Most lenders require an appraisal, at least deposit or credit card number or something of that manner, and you need to have that kind of six hundred to a thousand dollars is what an appraisal is now. They used to be four hundred to six hundred dollars until the government got involved about ten years ago, eight ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So, do do you have to get an appraisal? Uh, y y yes, you do. Well, I mean, maybe the buyer, they don't care how much the house is worth. They just want to buy the house. Yeah, you, you have to get an appraisal. Appraisal does more than just give you the value of the house. There's, it, it, it really tells you and, the, and your lender uh, a lot of details about the house. Um, there's a lot involved in, a, in an appraisal, not just the valuation. Okay. Good. Uh, so... So they have their earnest money, the inspection, the appraisal. Those are the only upfront costs they're going to need, correct? With Fairway Independent Mortgage and with most, okay. most mortgage companies. That's, that's, it, that's it. Okay. And that doesn't account, of course, moving-related expenses, which will ha happen um, later. Yes, that's the, you had to prepare for that, too, just like in any move. Yeah. So when... You know, you saved all this money, I'm assuming, and then so when they move in and they paid all that at closing, um, what, so wait, first, what happens to the earnest money? Okay, er, earnest money is part of the down payment, so it, it, it can go towards the down payment. Now, if you're getting down payment assistance like we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, um, then you may be able to be reimbursed your earnest money because the down payment assistance program will be paying for the the complete down payment and then some. Um, so it just depends on how your financing is put together by you and your loan officer. Okay, great. Now, what if, is it is it going to be the same regardless of the type of financing? No, it's not. Um, th now, the closing costs, the total closing costs will be the same probably depending on, not, probably depending on the kind of loan that you get it would be an FHA conventional or veterans VA okay and so I guess the first thing they need to do if they're thinking about buying a home is just to call you yes right? uh, have me pull credit have me do a consultation um, and let's figure out where we stand. And, and even if it's six months down the road, two years down the road, five years down the road, at least we'll know where we are and, and we'll have a plan of action for, for
for the future. Yeah, I think that's very important. I think a lot of buyers, you know, they, they don't want to, you know, if you don't want to talk to somebody until you're ready, that's usually not you as may good not be as, ready. <laughs> as, as talking to somebody who knows, who knows what they're doing and can help you do it better later. Yeah, for sure. So, okay, parent, and, and how, how, can, how can they reach you if they have questions? That, just give me a call at 253-226-6454, or you can email me at perin.walker at fairwaymc.com, which oh. is my work uh, email address. Great, great, parent. And uh, if our listener has any further questions on this topic, you can... Uh, leave comments on our Facebook page at Locking It In or email us at ask at lockingitin.com. Okay, and shortly we will be talking with Nick Baker from Boy Home Services and we'll be talking about carpeting and it's a really exciting topic and one that most ho- new home buyers aren't interested in in their home, uh, but uh, maybe he'll tell us uh, why they should be. Okay, so Perrin, if if I haven't been on the job two years, what what can I do? Well, if I need a house. Now? Well, what you can do is you can find someone that has been on the job for two years and get a co loan with them, co signer loan or co borrower loan with them, um, or you can find someone that has an income source such as disability income or uh, a pension or something of that, that sort where they have an income coming every month that can be uh, that can that can that we can make sure that it really exists okay great great and generally speaking what about the credit score how, how does what kind of credit for score? down payment assistance you need a 620 credit score for getting a loan with us, you need a 580 credit score if you're going to go another way. Okay, great. All right. When we come back, Nick Baker, Boy Home Services. Peekaboo, peekaboo, smile. Smile, buddy. Come on, smile. Oh, honey, he's still not smiling. Maybe he's not a smiler. (sighs) Yeah, maybe he's just not a happy baby. Maybe he's just being a boy. You know how boys are. Or maybe he's teething. Oh, poor baby, I think his gums hurt. Maybe he's just tired. Or maybe his tummy hurts. He didn't eat that much. Maybe he's not ticklish. You think maybe he's scared of the dog? Maybe he'll outgrow it. Maybe it's a phase. Maybe he just doesn't like smiling. Maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at autismspeaks.org slash signs, or see a doctor today for an autism screening. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better and it can make a lifetime of difference. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, What, the job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. Okay, welcome back. You're listening to Locking It In with Devin Pear 
on Play 1180 AM. And we are welcoming here in the studio our guest, Nick Baker. Nick is from Voy Home Services. And, okay, Nick, tell me, uh, what is it that you do? Well, thanks for having me on, uh, first, uh, Deb and Perrin. Um, so, Voy Home Services, we are a carpet cleaning, window cleaning, and pressure washing service company. Uh, we service both residential and commercial clients here in the, the greater Puget Sound area. Uh, we've been in business actually since 2012. Wow, that's quite a, quite a good run. So, can you tell me how you got into this business? Well, we started out um, we started out as a commercial only uh, window cleaning and pressure washing service. So we worked did a lot of work for big commercial clients like Franciscan Health Systems, uh, Walgreens, um, and then we also got a we picked up a regional account with FedEx Kinkos, and they wanted us to come in and do fifty nine of their stores across the Pacific Northwest for windows for monthly window cleaning. Um, but they wouldn't accept us unless we got into, we did also did their carpets at their stores. So we decided to go ahead and, and this was about three years ago, uh, we went ahead and got geared up for doing carpet cleaning, uh, started doing carpet cleaning for FedEx. And then we decided that if we're going to do this, we should probably do it right. And so that's when we started our training processes, our training programs with our employees as far as um, our certifications. Certifications. Okay. So is this a normal thing for the industry? You know, unfortunately it isn't. I see so many carpet cleaners out there who not only do they not have any certifications, but they sort of poo poo this whole certification process. Um, and it, it's really unfortunate because there's a lot of information out there, especially from industry professionals who've been in the, in the, in the industry for quite a long time, who, have a lot to share with new and upcoming businesses and you know these guys unfortunately you know they either for, for whatever reason don't take the certifications or won't take the certifications are really missing out on a really great um, opportunity to, to learn from these industry professionals so in your company um, how many people are certified or how does it work does it does someone that's certified go on every, on every job? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, actually, we're a IICRC certified firm, which means that we actually um, we actually guarantee our clients and also the um, Institute for Inspection, Cleaning, Restoration certification that we are going to send a certified person to everyone's home if we're doing that that process. So let's say we're coming out to do carpet cleaning. You're going to have one tech that shows up who is guaranteed certified in carpet cleaning to, their, to do your carpets. Even if I send two techs, the one's going to be certified. Same with upholstery cleaning. If I send somebody out to clean your really nice ba basset couch, there's going to be at least one certified upholstery cleaner there, even if we send out two techs. Excellent. And that's not that's not typical for the industry, is it? Unfortunately, like I said, yeah, it's not really all that typical. Okay. Um, you know, something I'm curious about, Nick, you know, most of my buyers, myself included, we, we seem to have a thing against carpet these days. And uh, I, I was talking with you recently at an event, and, 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 and you said something to me that caught my attention. Um, so tell me, Nick, what is it about carpet that you love? I love that carpet is a filter. Now, th there's a lot of people who are kind of taken back by that. Um, so think about your furnace at your home. Uh, your furnace has air running through it constantly, and in order to take the particulate and the dander and the pollen and the, and the allergens out of the air, it has a filter in it. So every now and again, I think the, the, um, most the HVAC guys recommend about every six months to replace or clean your air filter or your furnace filter, um, that filter has to be changed. And, and that is kind of what helps to keep your home clean and, and healthy and, uh, yeah, clean and healthy. But, um, so many people don't realize that your carpets actually serve that same purpose. And also they don't think about the fact that in the middle, middle months, like, during early spring or during early fall, where the temperatures are really climate, so that 
your furnace isn't running that much, you if you have no carpets in your house, you actually have zero filter because your furnace isn't running, your furnace isn't moving the air, filtering the air. There's actually no filters going on. So if so, your carpets actually act also as an interim filter when your furnace isn't going. So it like holds down the dirt. Absolutely, yes. I think that's why people don't like it. Yes, I mean, it, it is a maintenance item. Um, it holds the dirt, you know, and if people aren't having their carpets, if they're not vacuuming often enough, if they're not having the carpets cleaned often enough, yes, it can accumulate a lot of dirt. And, and that's where I think a lot of people so, sort of get into that, well, my carpets are really nasty, I want to get rid of them. But they don't realize that they're that way because they're collecting all the things that would otherwise be in the air and being breathed all the time. How often should a carpet be cleaned? The, um, does it, or does it depend? It, it really depends on how much, what kind of foot traffic you have coming through there. But generally speaking, the um, the Carpet and Rug Institute, uh, they recommend having your carpets professionally hot water extracted every 8 to 12 months. And, and how often vacuumed? Um, again, it, it depends on your foot traffic. But your high traffic areas, I think they say about one to two times a week. And the rest of the house, like it'd be like a once a month or quarterly, depending on the usage. Okay, I did not know that. Mm. So, so what what's this um, hot water extraction? Hot water extraction is a typical, um, you know, everyday household cleaning, and a lot of people refer to it as steam cleaning. Um, steam cleaning to me has always kind of confused me. I, th I thought they actually cleaned it with steam, but it's actually hot water. It does give off a lot of steam while we're doing it. But we were it's it's spraying a solution into the carpet and then quickly extracting it right back out again. Um, there are other companies out there that use like um, like ChemDry. ChemDry uses a carbonated water solution that they um, they spray on and they either uh, kind of agitate it in or ChemDry actually has a newer system where they actually extract it back out. But um, yeah, hot water extraction is pretty much the standard for. Um, for most, most carpet companies. And actually, if you talk to Mohawk, which is one of the biggest uh, carpet manufacturers in the country, and you ask them, you know, what do I need to do to maintain a warranty? Now, in the, uh, under no circumstances am I telling you your warranty, pro you know, your warranty on your carpet. But I got a response from them that basically said, all they require is hot water extraction, period. So, so to maintain the warranty, you, you have to have the hot water extraction how often? Um... Uh, that's a good question. Oh. I would have to ask them on that. Okay. Yeah, I'd never heard that before. <laughs> okay. So, so when you do that, it does it. It cleans the pad underneath as well. It does not. No. No. Um, there, there are ways to clean the pad underneath, like doing a subsurface extraction. Um, but we only do that if we need to, because when you get the the pad wet, it takes an immense amount of time to dry it. And most of the time, like if you have, like, let's say you have a big dog and that dog urinates into the carpet and it's going to soak into the pad a little bit, you know, we'll actually pull the carpet back and replace the pad underneath the carpet and then, you know, clean the carpet. Or if you, you know, sometimes, you know, with, with customers, with lots of dogs that have constant accidents, I'll come in and I'll say, look, I can't clean all the carpet, but what I can do is I can maintain the relationship between your dogs and your carpets. And so we'll actually put an enzyme into the carpet, which soaks down into the pad, and then do a subsurface extraction where we actually put a, a really high-velocity uh, extractor down on that spot, and then we'll put a rinse solution around the outside of it. And what it'll do is that rinse solution will soak down into the carpet, into the pad, and then that extractor sucks that fluid through whatever pet stain we're trying to extract excellent and rinses it out okay. and then after that we we will need to dry the pad because what, the thing that i tell customers is this is going to create a lot of scent in the house until everything's dry once everything's dry it's pretty well done okay so i got a real quick question sure what kind of how do you know which kind of carpet to get that's not a quick question <laughs> that's <laughs> that, that's a little bit involved um realistically <laughs> it, it really had, depends on your usage you know, if you if you live by yourself or just with your wife, I would recommend a different carpet than if you lived with seven kids and four dogs. Um, it really has to do with what what type of traffic you're going to have on the carpet, what type of usage. Are people going to be spilling Kool-Aid on there? Um, do you have pets? That type of thing. So 
there are lots of different carpets out there, and they all have different purposes. So what if you were selling your home? Uh, what would you recommend a seller to do? I would recommend a seller to clean their carpets first. Sometimes we can come in and actually um, create a, a better environment for selling the home than necessarily buying new carpets. Um, you know, so many people are ripping out their carpets just because their carpets are a little aged, a little bit dirty. And in, in my opinion, that's spending a lot of money to do something that maybe the buyer won't like. You know, maybe the buyer comes in and says, I don't like this carpet. It's all got to be ripped out. You know, that's a negative moment of truth for them. But if they come in and say, well, this has got good carpet in it, but I want something else, then you didn't spend the five, six, eight thousand dollars to have new carpets put in there. You know, I've I've never I've never done a house where I you know where a restoration clean has cost more than about a thousand dollars, and that's way cheaper than cha- than changing up the carpet throughout the house. And you know, when you do that, it gives the illusion the house has been cared for yeah and, and in good condition. And and odds are the buyer, regardless, if they they're going to rip out the carpet. You know, if you're a seller, usually you just put in the cheapest carpet to get it sold. And that often doesn't help get it sold faster, any faster maybe than if you had your older carpet cleaned, which was a nicer carpet in the first place. Correct. Yeah. Older carpet is nicer, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. You know, I mean, and and it really comes down to what type of carpet was in there versus what type of carpet you would have put in there. You know, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of nylons that are still in these houses these days, like in the 80s and 90s. A lot of people were were replacing their carpets with nylon carpet, which nylon carpet has great resilience. It's got great life to it. Um, And they'll rip out their nylon and put in a cheap polyester. Well, that nylon still had 20 years of life left in it. It just needed to be cleaned. So, you know, for me, that just that. Just kind of frustrating. Would in my... you recommend keeping a carpet that long? Oh yeah, absolutely. Really? Okay. So there's no real hard lifetime for a carpet. The only time I recommend people replace their carpet is just when it's falling apart. If there's bare spots in it, if it's got lines ripped up through it, you know, if it's something that's going to cost more to repair, if it's literally just falling apart, that's pretty much, you know, beyond that. There's a lot of things that we can fix in as far as the appearance and feel of your carpet. And for the price, it's, it's a good idea to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I mean, to have carpet replaced is, you know, two and a half to seven and a half dollars a square foot. You know, I mean, we're coming in at our prices to clean carpet starts at 35 cents a square foot. So, you know, just right there is huge cost savings. And so what about now? One more question I wanted to clarify is. The, regarding the pad mm-hmm. underneath, um, it, you could buy, from what I understand, you can buy a really, uh, it's, if you buy a cheap carpet and a good pad, maybe it's better than the other way around. Well, I don't necessarily ever recommend a cheap carpet, but absolutely a good pad is worth, well worth its money. Um, you're going to get way better life with a good pad than you are with a cheap pad. Okay. Um, so if if you want to put carpet in say a pantry would you recommend that I would not recommend putting carpet in a pantry there's just not a lot of airflow going through there normally Okay um we uh um Th- we'll be you. right back with to continue our interview with Nick Baker. to the store. Mom, Mom I want Mommy. juice. Mom, juice, 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 Mommy, juice, 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 Mom. Juice, juice, juice. Your child will have different needs at different stages of life, and that includes the car seat. That's right, the car seat. A car seat isn't one size fits all. You have to have the right seat based on your child's age, weight, and height. See, car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. But there's a website that gives you all the information you need. safercar.gov slash the right seat. 
You'll find out about types of seats, when to have a seat rear-facing, when to switch it to forward-facing, when it's time for a booster seat, and when it's time for your child to ride in the back seat with a seat belt. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. That's safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood? Or an earthquake is destroying buildings? When a tornado is tearing through town? Or a hurricane strikes? Or is the best time, perhaps, today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. And it's not always as simple as using your cell phone. That's why now is the time to take action. Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Okay, we're back in the studio with Nick Baker. Yes, and we apologize for that little technology glitch there. I was unable to hear the music earlier. So, Nick, let's continue. So, when I vacuum my carpet, uh, then I, I vacuum it and, and I, until there's, you know, all the dirt's up. Uh, is that enough? Well, um, so you have to vacuum on a schedule. Okay, so I, I can't say you have to. I definitely recommend that you create a schedule for yourself to vacuum. Um, you know, you have to realize that, you know, carpet cleaning and, and vacuuming is not something that you do when you notice that it's dirty. When you notice it's dirty, uh, it's actually a little bit too dirty. Um, so the carpet is a filter. It, it absorbs soiling, absorbs dust and dander and pollen and 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 pulls it down into the carpet and well when it starts to fill onto the top that's when you know it's the, the filter's full you know like it's just like the vacuum bag that you have you know i always tell people the vacuum bag is not a bag of gold you don't have to let it get full before you change it you actually want to change it before it gets completely full otherwise it's not as efficient your carpet the same way you want to vacuum you want to you want to maintain it before it actually starts to have a problem and so, realistic, getting yourself on a normal schedule, I want to vacuum twice. I want to vacuum my, my high traffic areas twice a week. I want to vacuum these rooms up here once a month. I want to vacuum the guest bedroom that I never go into, but there's still airflow in that room at least once a quarter. You know, so that's, that's kind of the, 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 what I recommend as far as vacuuming goes. So do you want, like, sometimes I see, you know, I, I don't, my carpet doesn't have this, but some carpets, you vacuum them and they have these it leaves tracks on the rug like you can tell somebody just vacuumed and and i kind of find that kind of un it bothers me i don't like that look is that is that what we want to have well you know the um the cri the the carpet and rug institute they actually have a seal of approval program for uh, vacuums vacuum cleaners on the market um unfortunately most of the vacuums you find at the the normal box stores and uh, um har hardware stores they don't. They aren't the, C the CRI seal of approval vacuums, and I don't know why that is. But the CRI, they they test the vacuums and they they approve the vacuum based on three three um, areas. It's um, how well they lift the dry soils out of the carpet, how well they keep the dry soils off the carpet, and also how they change the look and the look and feel of the carpet. So. You know, if you have a beater bar that really hits the carpet hard, it's really not great for the carpet. It'll actually, over time, start loosening those fibers and start causing your carpet to deteriorate. So you want to get a vacuum that vacuums your, your carpets well, but also gentle enough not to destroy them. So should we get the Practice Dyson on the market, or what should we get? Well, the CRI actually has a uh, list of their uh, approved vacuums on their website. If you go to uh, carpet-rug.org, there's an entire list of uh, CRI seal of approval approved uh, vacuum cleaners. Okay, good. And are they affordable? Yes, absolutely they are. Um, 
the vacuum that I use every single day uh, actually costs less than a Dyson ball. So, and it sucks twice as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks twice as good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so should I adjust the brush as low as it goes on the vacuum? Well, you know, uh, interestingly enough, um, I actually have a, uh, a Kirby vacuum, and it's got the adjustment just like you're talking about. Um, but my commercial vacuum that I use doesn't have adjustments because realistically that's not a thing. It just needs to sit on the carpet, you know, with so much pressure. Um, so yes and no, you know, it does need to be adjusted correctly, but a, a good vacuum isn't going to need to do that. Is it, do we mostly need to focus on the sucking or the grooming? Uh, mostly I think we need to focus on the frequency at which we vacuum. Okay. I would say that's probably most important. Uh, if, if you're getting a CRI seal of, a seal of approval vacuum cleaner, you're not really going to have to worry about the sucking or the or the the grooming or anything like that. That's just all going to be automatic. At that point, you just need to worry about making sure you're actually using your vacuum because it doesn't do you any good if it's sitting in the closet. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, what if I, uh, you know, I, I I use this a lot, uh, a product like Resolve, um, to pick up little, you know, things, wine, whatever, and <laughs> spills. Uh, do you do you recommend doing that? Um, you know, Resolve is actually a really, I, I, I actually pick on Resolve quite a lot, but honestly, Resolve is a great product. It works very well. Um, what I do tell people is that they need to follow up after Resolve with some sort of a flush because Resolve does leave a lot of residue in the carpet. And if you don't rinse those residues from the carpet, they will turn your carpet into a shoe cleaner. And a week later, the spot that you tried to clean will actually be worse than when you started. So um, what I recommend for that is to get yourself a little wet, dry shop back from like Home Depot. And then you can actually take and with a spray bottle, spray just some regular water into the spot. Not a lot. You don't want to soak the pad, you know, but you want to just think about a nice morning mist, you know, where the where the, the grass is just all wet, but it's not, you know, soaking wet outside. That's about how you want your carpet to be. Spray some watery carpet, rub it in with a white towel, and extract it with your wet vac. So is it okay to use a rug doctor? I believe so. Actually, the C, if you look on the CRI website, uh, their highest accreditation, their platinum level accreditation was actually given to the rug doctor, which there's a lot of carpet cleaners out there who were extremely angry about this. Um, but, you know, if you think about things from on a maintenance level, on a maintenance side of, of, um, of the coin, you know, if I come into your house and you don't have kids and you don't have pets, you know, it's just you live in there, you don't spill coffee on, on your floor, you know, you don't, you don't run, you know, around with, with uh, cans of Coke and spilling those on the floor, if all it is is, is the, the dust, the pollen, the dander, and the allergens that we're looking to get out of the carpet... The rug doctor, um, by definition, is the best option because it doesn't use a lot of heat, it doesn't use a lot of agitation, and it doesn't use a lot of pH. It's really a very gentle um, process on your carpets. That being said, 99.9% .9 of all houses that I come into, they don't need just a maintenance clean. They do have spots. They do have pets they do have kids running around with coke and you know and spilling it into the floor they do have pet issues that need to be taken care of and for those the rug doctor unfortunately is not the best option and we do need a more deep clean with a little higher ph of a spray and we do need a little more heat so you're talking about a professional cleaning correct yeah. can you tell me about that um so a professional cleaning what are we talking about maybe uh uh, what, what are you asking as far as what my process is? Yes. Okay. So a normal professional, a normal cleaning where I'm going to come in, let's say we've got average stains. We've got average everyday stains. We've got a few spots, you know, in front of the couch. Um, it's been, how long has it been, Perry, since you had your carpets cleaned? I'd say 15 months. So it's been about 15 months since you had your carpets professionally cleaned. You've lived in the house, but it's not horrible. Um, I'm going to come in with a normal everyday free spray. You know, it's going to be a high traffic lane pre-spray. It's going to be about 8.5 pH. Um, it's going to be child and pet safe. You know, everything that I bring into your house is going to be, 
you know, green certif green seal certified um, for the most part. You know, if I, unless I'm doing a restoration clean, most everything I'm going to bring in your house is going to be, you know, safe for me to, you know, safe for me to use around your kids. Um, so we're going to put that down. We're going to let it dwell for about five or ten minutes, and then we're going to extract it with hot water extraction. Now, the hot wa when I say hot water extraction, I'm actually talking about 230 to 250 degree water that's going to come in, and it's going to help suspend the soils. And then I'm going to I'm going to spray a solution in there that's going to help to neutralize everything that I sprayed in there and extract extract the soils back out of the carpet. Um, I'm going to be bringing in air movers because. In my business, um, one of the biggest complaints that when, when I ask people is, what is your biggest complaint about carpet cleaners? And everyone said, we hate wet carpets. So I make sure and do everything that I can possibly do to make sure that when I leave, your carpets are nearly dry. I can't promise that your carpets are going to be completely dry, but they're going to be nearly dry because I'm going to bring in air movers. We're going to put air movers all around. We're going to get those carpets clean, get those carpets dry. So as I move through the house, you know, let's say I've got five rooms that I'm cleaning. As soon as I finish that first room, there's an air mover going in that room. Second room, air mover going in that room. By the time I finish the last room, I actually move that first air mover from the first room, which is pretty much dry by now, and I move it to that fifth room. And then while I'm wrapping everything up, those last four rooms are drying. I wrap my, I'll wrap up all my hoses. I talk to you about our, our stay void clean program. We go through our invoice. And then as I wrap up, as I pull the air movers out, your house is 90% dry at a minimum. And it should be pretty well, you know, dry um, within two to three hours after we leave. And that's, that's realistically, that's the scenario that I explain to most every customer that we have. Now, if we come in and your, and your carpets are seven shades darker than they should be, you know, there's 12... 12 dogs living in there and there's 30 pee stains everywhere. That's probably not going to be a scenario that is likely. We're probably going to have to leave our air movers there overnight to dry out because we're going to have to use a lot of water to get all that out. But on a normal but maintenance You can do clean, something like that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Is normally your goal just to get the water out of the carpet and not the pad, not get the water on the pad, right? The or goal not? is not to put any water in the pad, you know, and w with the... With the process that we use, with the technique that we use, there is no water going in the pad on a normal clean. Because that would actually make it dirtier, right? Well, it would make it, you would think of a swamp. That's what it would, I mean, if, 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 the, wet, if the carpets are left wet for longer than 24 hours, there's actually, there will actually be mildew that starts to grow. And that's a bad thing. That's, n that's not me coming in and making your house more, house <laughs> more healthy. Yes. Oh, okay. So... Yeah. Um, uh, once again, we're talking to Nick um, Baker with Boy Home Services, and you're listening to Locking It In with Deb and Pear on Clay 1180 AM, and we will be back in a few minutes. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn those earrings today. I like those earrings. Gabby has those awesome earrings. I need to ask her where she got those, but that's just what she would want me to do. I'll have Michaela ask her for me. Buckle up, Sarah. Yeah, but then Michaela will be like, why don't you just ask her yourself? That's just like Michaela. Sarah, buckle up. Michaela's such a great name. I wish I was called Michaela. There's like a dozen Sarahs in my class. Hey, we're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh yeah, seatbelt. I forget sometimes because my brain is like busy, you know? I wonder if there's pizza at school today. Sometimes it can be tough to get through to your kids, but it's not impossible. Always make sure they're wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Remember, you have the keys, you have the power. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Sassy! Sassy! This week's episode, Danger at the Old Well. Last one to the old well's a rotten egg! Ha ha! I win! Whoa! Ah! Sassy! Johnny fell down the well! I'm wet! What, Sassy? You know where Mr. Gunderson keeps his rope? Go 
get it, girl. <laughs> what? You'd rather use this time to set people straight about shelter pet adoption? I'm cold. <laughs> people shouldn't be afraid to adopt from a shelter? <laughs> because shelter pets are screened for sound health and temperament? I'm wet and cold. Sassy, what about Johnny? <laughs> What? Let Johnny sit in the well until he learns to be more self-reliant? Sassy! What did he say? Sassy is brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Remember, adopt. Okay, we're back. You're listening to Locking It In with Devin Petter on Clay 1180 AM. And we are speaking with Nick Baker, and we're talking about carpeting. Okay, Nick, so when, when should I call Voy Home Services instead of just doing it myself or replacing my carpet? Well, you know, um, that's a great question, and I think I would have to leave that up to each homeowner them, for themselves. They have to decide at one point that they want a, a professional to come in. Um, so what we do, honestly, you could do yourself um, given enough time. You know, I mean, there's a um, there's actually a a four point scale of cleaning, and it's time, pH, heat, and agitation. Okay, so that's that's the process that I use to clean. And so for me, the most valuable thing is time. So I increase pH, heat, and agitation to save time. Okay, so for for somebody who doesn't have a sixty thousand dollar carpet machine like I have they're going to be offset with using more time. So they're not going to use as much pH. They're not going to use as much heat. They're not going to have as much agitation. But it's as much time as they want to spend. So that's that's really the, where I come from is how much time do you have? How much time do you want to spend? How, and what is your time worth? You know, we come in, we use we use highly efficient equipment to do a really fantastic job. Yes, you could do the same job yourself, but it's going to take you a lot more time. And that's really what it comes down to. What is your time worth? And as far as replacing the carpets, um, I really feel, in my opinion, people, you know, for whatever reason, replace their carpets a little too often. You know, pe people come to me, well, I don't know if I want to clean this carpet because it's 15 years old. And I'm like, 15 years old, it's getting broke. It's just getting broke in. You know, I mean, honestly, I mean, I replaced my carpets when they were 45 years old and they were pretty well done then. But yeah, I mean, you know, carpets have a good long life to them. And, you know, when I replaced my carpets, I had never cleaned them. I had never cleaned them. That was actually before I was a carpet cleaner. Um, it, had I cleaned them, I probably could have gotten more life out of them. But having dirt in your carpets reduces the life of your carpet. Um, so normal cleaning, you know, maintenance cleaning is really great for the life of your home and also the life of your carpet. Your carpet is an investment, just like your roof is an investment. You should have your roof cleaned and, and treated when it starts to get mossy. You know, the pain on the outside of your house is an investment. It keeps, you know, the bugs and the, and the, and the cold air out. I mean, everything is, it's, your carpet is also an investment in the, in the health and quality of your home. So it's just, it's just all about how much is your time worth. What about green cleaning? Do you guys do that? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you have any concerns as far as the, the products that we use or um, any of our processes, you know, we custom tailor our cleaning methods to to you however you want to do it so when when I come into somebody's home and you know we walk around and they just need a maintenance clean and they're concerned about the products that we use yes we can absolutely use green certified products only we can even use no products we can use deionized water to clean your carpets deionized water is kind of one of those up-and-coming things it's it's really starting to get big um, it, we've been around deionized water for a long time as window cleaners, so I understand how deionized water works, and it actually works pretty well. Um, and it's got its strengths and weaknesses, just like anything else, but it is a process that we can use. What about the chemicals that you normally use? Are, do, they have, are they, do they have a big scent? or? Some of them do, some of them don't. Uh, er, you know, I mean, it's, if you have... Uh, if you have irritations or sensitivities to odors and smells, um, that's a great thing to, to, to bring up. I always ask it when I come in, you know, or do you have any sensitivity to smell? You know, there's a stuff that I use. It's called Grand Slam, you know, and it is, it is a middle-of-the-road uh, carpet cleaner made by Matrix. It's um, really fantastic for just maintenance clean, but it's got, a, it's got a really cool, I think it's a really cool, like, uh, minty, citrusy scent to it. But some people don't like it. 
And so I'll go, I'll switch to another product that has zero scent whatsoever, which is just as good. Um, but I kind of like the smell of the, of the Grand Slam. <laughs> well, you know what I don't like the smell of is, is sour milk. <laughs> um, so how, how should I handle that if there's spilled milk on my rug? Well, it, you know, it depends. Again, um, are you handling it or am I handling it? I am handling it. You are handling it. Okay. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, soak up as much as you can. You know, put a, a dry towel over and just, you know, soak up everything that you can. And honestly, you not actually it, right? do not rub it. That's correct. You want to blot it. You know, you understand what blotting means. You're just kind of damping the, uh, I'm, I'm hitting the table like you can see what I'm doing. Um, you're just dabbing the, the, uh, the top of the carpet to try to get the, uh, the milk to soak into the towel. Um, and then really you want to do that until the carpet is nearly dry. So you don't want to put any, you don't want to add any moisture back into the carpet while there's still moisture from whatever you're soaking up because you're going to create a bigger mess. So it, like, again, if you have that little shop back at home, that's a great first step. You know, soak, suck that stuff up as much as you can. And then you're going to want to, you know, put, put a, um, I would just rinse that out with, are we talking milk or sour milk? Well, it gets sour the next morning, right? It, I, I suppose it would get a little sour the next morning. It depends yeah. on if I spill it or she spills it. This is true. This is true. So, um, we uh, Boy Home Services actually we offer we offer two products and we offer them to them absolutely for free to everyone, whether you are a customer of ours or not. And one of them is actually an enzyme treatment, it's specifically for pet enzyme pet orders. But it also works great for sour milk. It's actually got it. The enzyme actually digests the the biological material that creates uh, not only smells but spots. You know, um, so if if uh, I'm getting off subject here, but if a pet pees in your carpet, they're going to put proteins and salts into the carpet, and those are the things that create the uh, the the spot, the yellowing, and 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 the odor. And so the enzyme actually digests the proteins and the um, and the salts that create the spots, as well as di digesting the biological material that's creating the odor. And it would do the same thing with sour milk. Okay. So, but there are off, on the shelf, off the shelf products for pet stains. It's the stuff that will work for the sour milk is correct. Right. Would work for what, the sour quick, milk. Real quick, what about dry cleaning versus wet cleaning? Um, dry cleaning has its purposes. Um, it really depends on what type of carpet you have. Um, you know, obviously if you've got, like I say to people, if you've got a really nice, uh, Persian wool rug, um, and you spill, let's say you spill some chocolate syrup on it, um, you, because it's a natural fiber and because it's got a jute backing, you don't want to get that jute backing wet unevenly because when the jute, when the jute is a cellulose material, when it gets wet, it actually expands and it'll cause rippling in that, in that rug, and it'll actually cause permanent damage to that rug if you get it wet. So that's where we come in with a dry cleaning process, like a, a, solvent, a solvent powder, or you know, just um, using our dry tool that we use for upholstery cleaning, we would just clean the tips if need be. You know, there's different processes that we use other than hot water extraction to get those spots so out. be very careful with yeah. a Persian rug. Yes, absolutely. Be very careful. And you always, definitely, if you ever try and clean a Persian rug on your own, always test for a color fastness. Because sometimes, because it's a natural fiber, the colors won't necessarily stay where they're supposed to. Okay. All right, so Nick, um, I understand um, that you're writing a book you want to tell us about it? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm, I'm actually quite excited about it. Um, so I started on the book about a week and a half ago, and I'm trying to get it done by Sunday, and I don't know that that's going to happen, but I'm Pretty working on it. And I was actually working on it a little this morning when you guys showed up for breakfast. So um, I'm, I'm working on it every chance that I can get. <laughs> Yeah, would you would you would you like to share some with us? Um, yeah, so so the book is kind of in process right now, um, and the I I haven't really settled on a name of the book. Um, I'm thinking right now it's going to be 16 tips and tricks for home cleaning written by the pros. Um, and when I say pros, what I mean is <laughs> me and a combination of of my friends we're getting together. You know, uh, they're I'm asking other people questions and. It's written by me, but you know it, it yeah. is it is a general yeah, knowledge for people. Profession. You know, um, but yeah, I, I I actually prepared a little segment here um, that kind of goes along with this talk. You know, it has to do with indoor air quality, um, 
and it's uh you know so it, it this talks about misconceptions uh so one of the things that i hear from customers a lot is they say okay so uh so you're saying i have lack of maintenance for my carpets but carpet cleaners are expensive and i can keep my hardwood floor clean myself this is a statement i hear all the time it's an interesting top topic and i'll tell you why uh so misconception number one i can keep my hardwood floor clean myself this is technically true. You can keep a hardwood floor clean yourself, and it is a little bit easier than keeping a, a carpeted floor clean yourself, but you are missing one very important factor, your indoor air quality. The Carpet and Rug Institute has done numerous studies of the effects of carpet versus hardwood on indoor air quality and have found that without a doubt, you tank your, eye, your indoor air quality when you remove the carpets in your home. Why is this, you ask? Well, carpets act as a passive filter in your home trapping the dust and allergens that eventually fall to the floor. I have on many occasions compared the filter in your furnace to the carpets on your floors in presentations I have given. In chapter two, I explained about the changing of your filters in your furnace because they will eventually get dirty and plugged. So what do we need to do when this happens? Do we say, ooh, and throw the filter out, wipe our hands and say, well, there, now we don't have to deal with that anymore. No, that would be silly. We replace the filter with a new one, or in some cases, the filter clean the filter and return it to the furnace ready to collect dust and dander once more. So why are we doing this with our flooring? The carpet in the home is a filter. To clean the filters is part of our normal maintenance routine. All right, Nick, thank you very much. And you were just listening to Locking It In with Deb and Pear. And you can download us um, at LockingItIn.com. We'll see you next week.